You may have heard that a telescope is a time machine, and that's true. When you use a telescope to look at something distant in the universe, you're looking back in time. Anytime you look at anything, you're looking back in time because it takes light time to travel. And so whenever you look at something distant, light has taken some time to get to you and the picture you have of that thing is a little bit old. If you look at the moon, you're looking at about 1.3 seconds ago. If you look at a star in the night sky, you're looking at tens or hundreds or even thousands of years ago. And if you look at a distant galaxy, you might be looking at millions or billions of years in the past. And that means we can use telescopes to study the history and evolution of our universe by seeing it directly. Now, the universe is about 13.8 billion years old, and it turns out we can look at galaxies that formed in the first billion years of the universe, and we can look even beyond that. What happens if you look past the most distant galaxies? You can actually see the beginning of the universe. If we look far enough away in any direction, we can see parts of the universe that are so far away that it's taken light almost the entire age of the universe to get to us, which means that we're seeing the first light of the cosmos. We're see we can see the fiery plasma of the Big Bang itself. And when we look at that fiery plasma, we see that it has little patches of places where there's a little bit more matter, or a little bit less. And we can see that the places where there was a little bit more matter, that those places were destined to come together and form stars and galaxies and even clusters of galaxies. And when we look at the, that distant pattern in the background light, and when we look at early galaxies, and even when we look at more nearby things, we see that there's something missing in what we're seeing in the universe. There's, there has to be extra matter out there that we can't see with our telescopes. We know that because in that background light, those clumps of matter are a little bit too clumpy. And when we look at the early galaxies, they form a little bit too soon in the beginning of the universe. And when we look at nearby galaxies, they're rotating a little bit too fast. And all of that points to the same thing, that there's some invisible matter that's actually most of the matter in the universe. That invisible stuff, we don't know what it is, we call it dark matter, because we can't see it and we don't know what it's made of. Now, dark matter is really hard to study. Because it's invisible, so we can't directly see it in the night sky, but if it's invisible, that also means it's untouchable. Because it turns out the same reason you can see something is the reason you can touch it. When you touch something, what's really happening is the electrons in your hand are pushing against the electrons in the object with electromagnetism, the electromagnetic force. And the electromagnetic force is transmitted through photons, particles of light. Particles of light do electromagnetism and they also do what we think of as light. And so if particles of light, if photons can pass right through something, if it's invisible, then you're not going to be able to touch it either. And so there are only a few options for directly studying dark matter. There's a possibility that dark matter particles might bounce off of regular matter particles once in a while through something called the weak nuclear interaction. It's also possible that dark matter particles, if they interact with each other, could annihilate and create regular matter. And then we might be able to see high energy particles coming out of regions where there's a lot of dark matter. So we look out into the sky and we look for places where there might be some extra radiation that could be caused by dark matter annihilating with itself. Or if you're like me, you think about how dark matter might annihilate in the early universe in those first stars and galaxies and how that might have changed the course of cosmic evolution. Now, because I'm a theorist, I don't use telescopes. <laughs> I use computers and I use calculations to try to figure out what dark matter did in the early universe. But there are going to be some really amazing observations coming soon with powerful new, powerful new telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope in space, the Square Kilometer Array that will be a, an array of telescopes that will see some of the earliest gas that the, in the universe that the galaxies formed from. And in order to be able to use those observations properly, we need to know what to look for. And so that's where people like me come in, trying to do these calculations to figure that out. Because it turns out that no matter how powerful your telescope is, most of the universe, some of the most important things are gonna be the things that you do not see.